Are you freaking... Hey there. Good morning. Welcome back to the live stream. It is April 5th, 2018. My name is Jeff Fritz. And I'm a little annoyed with OBS this morning. What does Fritz mean in C Sharp Fritz? It's my name. Ah, it's okay that you missed the last stream. It was really spur of the moment when I started that one up. Some housekeeping before we start. We've got to cover these things. Of course, the music we have playing in the background. This is a song called Chartreuse from our friend Carl Franklin. It's part of his music to code by. Uh, you can get that package of songs. Songs that are engineered to help you get in the groove and, and in the flow. Thank you for the host there, Dev Chatter. You can get uh, all the information about music to code by at mtcb.pwop.com. Or you can ask a question about it in the chat room, and the Fritz bot will give you the, little, the links to it. Um, today's hat, this is an older hat. This is a hat that's about five years old. This is my first Microsoft hat. Um, and a quick story. Um, before I was an MVP, before I was an ASP Insider, I was I was a, uh, just a community speaker. And... Um, I was selected to be part of the ASP Insider program, and I got to go to campus to attend MVP Summit. Now, I, I didn't really know the Microsoft folks. I had read their blogs. I had seen their presentations at, at TechEd um, and PDC, but I didn't know them. And uh, it was my first, my first chance to go to Microsoft campus. I had never been to Seattle, never been to Redmond. And uh, I... I took the opportunity and I flew out and I attended the event and I had an amazing time. And uh, I wanted to make sure that I that I remembered it and that I, you know, f I, I made sure that I continued to feel like I belonged in, to the Microsoft family because as, as an ASP insider and even as an MVP, um, I gave feedback and I felt like I belonged to the family, right? To that I, that I was helping the product team. So I wanted to make sure that I, I got a hat while I was there. So I went to the company store on campus and this was the hat I bought. And you could see it's weathered, it's pretty well beat up. I've been wearing it for, off and on for many, many years. But this this old navy blue hat was actually one of the first hats with the, the perfectly square logo that you see. Um, and uh, reminds me of how I, how I got started on this long, strange trip that I'm on now. So there you go. That's today's hat that I'm wearing. Um, so I've been having some problems with my NVIDIA drivers. And if you tuned in and you saw me over the last two days, you've seen me... You've seen me complain a little bit about that. How many hats does Jeff have? Uh, let's see. It should... It should respond. You know what? The... Uh, it's It hasn't... The bot started. It's connected. It's taking its good old time, though. I'm wondering if this is like a just-in-time compilation issue. Uh, let's see. I wonder if I can, if I can push this a little bit. It should respond here. Oh yeah, it's taking its good old time responding from my Docker container. There we go. We should see it responding in just a second. It, but if you've tuned in, the the bot should start responding in any second now. Go ahead, fire another uptime in there. Let's see if it responds. It feels like it's just having a hard time getting started because I'm not even seeing it reporting that it's heard messages yet. But the bot is there. It should be in the chat room. Um, I will kick it just to make sure. Because it, it should be there. Come on. It's awake. It's configured. 
but I want to talk a little bit about this NVIDIA problem that I've been having. And I think it's not so much in... It's somewhere between NVIDIA and Windows, and I'm, I'm tracking it down. Excuse me. Um, there it is, now connected to the chat room. Let's do a quick refresh and make sure that everything's running. There we go, now the bot's responding. There you go, now you can ask the questions and it'll answer. It'll <clears throat> it'll query and, and answer them for you. Put a question mark at the end of that and it'll detect that it's a question and it'll answer it for you, Duel. Um, can I feature other great channels below? Um, it should show you who, who I'm hosting and stuff like that. Uh, ignored command Q&A. Hmm. Cool down active. Aha. All right. There's a random guy. Good morning. So this NVIDIA issue that I've been running into, I don't think... I don't think this is so much a, uh, and it's a 30 second cooldown on the, on the uh, questions. Um, yes. So I don't think it's so much an issue with, with the drivers as with hardware. So let me show you here. I run, in case you haven't seen, you can see on the Twitch wall, the list of features, uh, the list of hardware that I use here. Let me go over to the code. And I was spelunking around the OBS forums to find out, you know, why am I getting this initialization error? Let me show you what I've what I've found here. So I'm, I opened my device manager on my Surface Pro 2. And look at this. Intel Graphics 620. So that's the graphics card that's in the Surface Book screen. And then it's showing me my USB 3 external interface. I have a, a device connected using USB to give me video on another screen. Good morning, Brendan. The NVIDIA card isn't showing here at all. And that's weird. That That's why, why aren't you showing me my NVIDIA card? So let me show you. I Some folks were saying, well, you, you kind of have to kick it by launching an application that actually demands access to it. And even though I'm using the power configuration that says, um, here we go, best performance, and it has it turned on. So I've, I launched Sketchable, which is supposed to be using the NVIDIA card. And look at, come here, scale, thank you. It's still, where'd it go? It's still not appearing here that it's actually running. So if I show the hidden devices, you see it's hidden. And when it, this hardware device is not connected to the computer, it, it is connected to the computer. Um, so there's something going on here where the video card doesn't start when I demand access to it. And uh, that feels weird. So I'm gonna look at my power options here. And let's see. Yeah, it's not even it's not even an option in my power options. So here's what I'm going to do, and you've seen me do this before. I'm going to jump on Twitter and I'm gonna ask the surface folks a question. Now it's not a BIOS problem. This is a software problem. Um, on my Surface Book 2, the NVIDIA card is refusing to start when I set power to, uh, what's it called? To best performance. Known issue? None of my NVIDIA configured apps are detecting and using the hardware and the card is shown as um, disconnected in device manager let's see what they say 
So I want to make sure that they know that there's an issue and that um, I need help fixing it. Random guy, VS is garbage. Why not move to cross-platform development environment with Visual Studio Code? I beg to differ, random guy. Visual Studio is by far um, the most used commercial IDE on the market. Um, Visual Studio Code is great as well, but it's a text editor. It's not a full IDE. Someone needs to let MCT know about that typo. What typo? What's the machine? This is a Surface Book 2. It's the fully loaded 15-inch. Watching the stream and seeing how normal things don't work made me think VS is garbage. No, I'm running a preview version, and um, there are some things that are still in flux that are still being updated. Surely VS Code is never going to have feature parity with proper Visual Studio. Otherwise, Microsoft would be cannibalizing their own market. True. Um, th there's... There's definitely issues with um, where where people want Visual Studio Code really to be a text editor and not an IDE. BIOS is software too, yes. I have the same issue with my Dell Precision. Aha! So it could be a Windows connectivity issue. Do you think we'd get a response as fast as you will, given we don't work for good old Microsoft? Um, there's, there's power in numbers. The more of us that say, hey, we have this issue, the more opportunity we have to get a, get a response to something like that. Um, and you know what? The, <laughs> the bot's been recognizing your questions and has been unable to handle some of those questions. And actually, it's hanging on the question... What's the machine, Jeff? That's interesting. So I finished wiring up our Q&A bot to this FAQ page that I have here on GitHub. So if you go to GitHub, C Sharp Fritz, Fritz Livestream, and then you click on the wiki, there's a Frequently Asked Questions page here that has all the different questions that I want the bot to know how to answer. Hey, good afternoon, Franklin. Um, do you think Surface are a bit overpriced and not compared to Mac, but compared to other laptops? Um, they're a bit pricey, certainly. Um, but when you start looking at higher-end devices that have higher-end, um, almost desktop quality hardware in them, you're going to see, um, you're going to see, a uh, higher price for those things. So... What is the machine you broadcast with? You now you are using, and then I'll answer it with Jeff is uh, bro hmm? broadcasts with a Surface Pro two and uh, edits code using a Lenovo Yoga. Yoga, uh, 910S, there we go, added machine question. Now when I save this, there's a webhook that'll fire, that'll hit an Azure function. The Azure function will bounce over to the Q&A bot and restart, uh, restart the learning there. And my bot is hanging, look at this, let me show you. It's hanging on that what's the machine question. So there's an await statement in there that it's not quite finishing. So I'm gonna stop this and rerun it again. And it should pick up and start answering questions again. But I'm not sure why it's hanging there. Because after the handling question log, it should, um, it should await and bounce off of the um, cognitive services and get that still hanging in docker yeah it, it, every now and again you can see it answered a couple questions and then it just kind of hangs and it's not quite clear why now it's connected there we go so it is answering it is responding um is it the apostrophe from smab Mm, it's not see look at that there it is hanging again maybe we should add some timeouts to the web requests 
There we go. So I just keyed those in. I didn't do any other changes. If at first you don't succeed, call it version one. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. It is answering. I think uh, I think John's right there that we should add some timeouts to the web requests just to make sure. Uh, use my on timeout extensions. Oh, look at that. Have the bot echo when it joins the chat. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. And there you go. There's training videos. Hey, Belarus. Welcome, Azazio. Thanks for joining us. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more with the wiki, but I feel like I want to fix the bot briefly here. Just take a look at why we're getting some of that hang issue there. Let's take a quick look over at the bot. Correction or timeout. What's the or timeout extension? Which one? Let's see what we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Don't open secrets JSON, Jeff. All right. Don't do it. All right. In here, I wanted to go. Uh, so this is my. I wrote a command interface, right? An I command. And this will. This class is. Well, this interface knows how to handle questions. Handle commands that the bot receives and I've got a couple different things that this bot needs access to configuration so it now knows how to get my connection information to Azure the chat service that it's receiving the command from and a logger so we can log some information about it um, oh, look at that so I'm gonna go down here so here it is client well here we go right this is blocking right there there's there's our first problem. Um, there is actually not just upload string, but upload string task async. And I want to await that so that it handles properly. Um, and then you have, it, it was or timeout, right? Let me see, that was an extension method that you built. I'm not getting a I'm not getting a. Uh, I'm not getting an extension method on that. Let's do a quick look for that method. There it is. Task extensions. It's in Stream Tools Helpers, which is not. Where is it? Helpers, Task Helpers. Here. All right. You can't say it. It's behind my head. And ooh, my my webcam is a little bit uh, it's a little bit bright back there. What the heck? Let's see. You can mock it in .NET Core. It's built for task, not task of string. Uh, hang on, hang on. I hear you. See, if I keep pushing this up, I kind of disappear. All right, see that? My shirt disappears. Uh, Space Shot, thank you for hosting. Let's see if I can just... That's fine. There we go. All right. I can move it to dot .core. I think so. It's built for task, not task of st type string. Well, it's not even in the right... See, there's a, a generic one here. Uh, <laughs> so let's do this. Um, I'm just going to add this directly in here as a helper. All right, so I'm going to add a new folder. Helpers. And then I should be able to add it as an existing item and add it as a shared item, right? Have you seen how to do that? I'm gonna go stream tools, helpers, task extensions, and then see how the ad has this little half thing here. If I click that, I can say add as link. 
and it's over here. Yeah, thanks. So now it's available for me to use. But I need to add the appropriate namespace reference. So if I control dot, I get it. And now I can specify or timeout and then a number of milliseconds. Um, 5,000 seems like a good, uh, a, a good time to pause there. Now, what happens when we do timeout? So, or timeout, await task when any, throw timeout exception. So I'm, I'm going to want to handle that timeout exception here. So let's catch a timeout exception. And then I will say logger dot log warning. Um, uh, Azure services did not respond in time to question. And then I should probably mention what the question was that I'm not responding to. You know what I mean? That'd be a good idea. And then let's break. Let's exit. All right. So changing this to a task, right, to an async method should help me out a little bit here. And then I like that timeout extension. That's pretty nice to just make sure that it always, it always returns, you know, and five, five seconds is a very nice uh, time span there to wait. I have a spelling mistake, perhaps around line 79. Ah, okay. Let's fix that while I'm here. Cool. So what I'm going to do then is go uh, Fritz Stream Tools. Let's commit those changes. Added a timeout to the cognitive services request. You know what? I should actually tell folks that I wasn't able to answer the question. Also, shouldn't I? Um, do this. And you know what? I don't even want to wait. I just want it to run. To answer the question at this time. Right, I don't, you know, fire that message back. I don't need to wait for it to return. Continues before the call is completed. Yeah, I know. I don't want to wait. Just let it run. Uh, hello there, Mr. XJKS. Uh, I've, uh, is that Jacques? Did I have that right? Or Joke, that's how you pronounced it, right? All right, I am going to commit. Use the dot forget. Is there a dot forget? Oh, do tell. What did you do here? Empty on purpose. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. Just fire and forget. Nice. All right, so I will commit those changes excuse me we'll push that and then I'm going to what's the uh, versions that I have here 11.5 so let's I'm not even going to do that I will build and this is 0 0.11.6 so I rebuild my docker image Oh, joke, I'm running into issues with NVIDIA, still. And uh, my wonderful video card is disappearing on me. Thanks for picking that up, President Not Short. Gosh, you could have... Uh, uh, yeah, you can open an issue or you can send a pull request for those types of fixes. 
I'm always open to taking your pull requests. If there's something that I'm working on here on stream, you have an idea, something you want to discuss, or something that you think would be a good addition, go ahead and send a pull request, and I'm happy to review that here on stream, talk about it, and um, you'll see from the other pull requests that I've reviewed and I've talked about here on stream, I, I, am, I won't be belligerent. I'm, I, I like to think I'm very polite. And I, I want to talk through some of your ideas and give you some feedback. Maybe you have some feedback for me that'll help out. So let's work together, right? I think I, I don't think of, of the folks in the chat room as, as viewers so much as pair programmers that have different experiences than me. Um, so there we go. See, look at that. It's still hanging on that last question from Bruno. It, it didn't even pick up on a uh, joke's question there. How are you? So I'm going to pull down a new version. Nope, it's not pull, it's get. So I'll just get a new version. I'll restart the bot. Here it comes. There we go. It is nice to have anyone in chat that understands task better than I do. Yes. Oh, yes. There we go. Cool down set, and we'll see it get attached to the chat room in just a second. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then I want to run over and start working on the wiki. Because I got a number of questions on the issues board for the core wiki here that I want to make sure that we talk about and and take a look at because um some of you have some great feedback there that i'd like to make sure that we talk about there we go all right and the follower goal let's make that refreshed so we get everything reconnected and running developers, 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 ah, developers, that's not the right thing i grabbed the wrong thing <laughs> uh, Lucius, Lucius Fox, welcome. All right, I'm going to move this off so we can actually write some code. There we go. All right. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, our wiki project. Let's take a look at this. So, we started working on a very simple project. Oh, and I'm getting light issues now. I got to ignore that. I gotta ignore that. Um, we started working on a wiki project that was intended to be very simple and really be, just be some razor pages that connect out and work with um, work with very simple data, very simple. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Tag uh, tag helper, some markdown, and paint a page. Um, need to know if it's Twitch or Mixer. I'm not sure which one it is, but one of them is running slow. It's, so. So this is intended to be really a beginner's tutorial project, right? I, I want to go with the lowest common denominator, very simple content management, very simple interaction with the, uh, with the database. Uh, happy to catch the stream live. Oh, uh, glad to have you, Lucius Fox. Um, uh, oh, welcome. Glad you could join us, and uh, I look forward to seeing your questions in our chat room. Um, <laughs> John is very determined. That's great. I More power to you. Um, so there were a bunch of issues that I opened when we started this project. Things like we want to do authentication and be able to have a search capability. Images, featured articles, blah, 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 blah. Identity server for authentication. Um, EU friendly streams are always welcome. Yes. So I've been criticized by my friends on the West Coast of the United States, on the Pacific Coast, out there in California and Seattle, that um, it's not a friendly time for them. And my response to them is my friends in London and in Europe, in Germany and, and Sweden and Denmark that have been joining in, they think it's a great time. So. Uh, because I'm Batman. <laughs> That's what late night streams are for. Right. So there's streams that are late night as well. So I had I received a number of questions here and things that are asking to go into different architectures and different things. So let's just take a quick look here. I want to make sure that I address these questions. Seems to be simple for up to 10 users. Okay. 
let's imagine we get to 300 million users concurrently. Now, to be fair, 300 million concurrent users is more traffic than Wikipedia concurrently. So, um, so there's that. 20,000 concurrent queries featuring feature search, track changes, article ratings. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, 50,000 concurrent updates. Yeah, that could happen. But really, when we think about Wikipedia, the updates are l significantly less frequent than the number of uh, than the number of queries. So the suggestion is let's explore the CQRS pattern. Now, CQRS, for those of you that aren't familiar, is the command query responsibility segregation pattern. And it's a way for you to separate the read processes from the write processes. And when you get to a certain amount of complexity and scale in your application, it's going to make more sense to take an approach like this so that your writes to your database don't lock out those folks who are trying to read from the database. And um, Evandro here is suggesting that we use a Docker container to hold the query repository. Not a bad idea. And use a Docker container to handle the, the right operations, updates, deletes, inserts. Um, I first think the change to database platform to SQL 2017. Both Docker containers connected in another container. So this is... This is actually a, a good scaling set of demos for this project. I'm not I'm not disagreeing with what Avandro is suggesting here at all. This this actually would be a very nice set of demonstrations for this project. Now, this is designed though to be a learning project, and I I definitely want to do these, but I think we want to get some of the other simple features built first, use a little bit of a repository pattern, and then we can take a look at bringing in CQRS a little bit further down. Once we have some of those basic features working, and then because I'm structuring this application to have very a very clear separation between user interface and our business logic, we should be able to swap out the way that we interact with the business logic and take advantage of this design pattern at that time. So I really like this, but I wanna say, let's wait a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take a look, quick look at the chat room. My local time is 4 p.m., which is perfect for me, terrific. Uh, from the, the Germany point of view, it's a great streaming time. Uh, see that? See that? Um, you know, good Abend out there in .NET know-how. Uh, Dev Chatter is just after this one. Has plenty of Germans attending. Friendly on both sides of the Atlantic. There you go. All right. So I'm going to respond. Um, this is a great idea. And I am going to keep um, a uh, good separation between um, user interface and business logic concerns so that we can um, adapt to this architecture once the uh, base functionality is completed. This is uh, intended as a learning project. And, um, and I think this would be a good lesson. Um, thanks for the suggestion. Um, I'm going to mark this as an enhancement. And we'll revisit um, soon. So let's add the enhancement label. And I'm going to put that comment on there. I love the C Sharp and .NET Core community. Yeah. Um, I wish your stream didn't have to go through a daily stand-up. Oh, sorry about that. 
Same for Switzerland. Perfect time. I was in Switzerland last year, and I, I'm not going to make it back out this year. I was in, um, I was in Baden in Switzerland. Terrific town. I really enjoyed my visit there as an American. Um, felt very comfortable. No concerns about language, that kind of thing. Very nice. Oh my gosh, thank you for the cheer, random guy. You're really popping off with programming streams here on Twitch. I did decided to give you all my savings uh, as a sign of appreciation. I'm leaving this money to you. Use it wisely. <laughs> well, random guy, here's what I'm going to do. Of course, um, all cheers, all um, subscriptions to the uh, to the stream. I'm going to make sure that we match and, and I'm going to forward... To our friends at Girl Develop It, um, they're a they're a um, nonprofit organization that teaches women un and underserved minorities how to write code. So I am more than happy to uh, to match that and make sure that that they get our support. Thank you so much, random guy. Uh, let's see here. How, yeah, I usually miss much of the beginning of the stream because it intersects with the stand up also. Planning for 300 million users smells like premature optimizing a little. I agree, Meat Popsicle. It does sound a little premature optimization. Um, and that's why I think, well, let's revisit that after we get the base features done. I don't think we're at an MVP yet, a minimum viable product yet. So let's, let's get some of these other things built, and then we can refactor and get that in there. Oh my gosh! Girl develop it. Thank you, Suze, for the for the subscription. That's no opcat, my friend Suze Hinton, uh, one of my colleagues at Microsoft. Uh, she has an amazing stream on Sunday mornings, uh, talking about JavaScript and hardware development. Really great stuff uh, that I I encourage you to check out. There's always a great crowd there talking about some really interesting things uh, with Arduino devices, um, Node libraries. Really great stuff that she's working on there. So I, I recommend checking her, checking out her stream. She also does uh, great streams sometimes in the middle of the week where she's exploring various Azure services. So give her a follow. Go over there to No Opcat Stream, mash that follow button, and uh, you'll get the notification when she's, uh, when she's streaming as well. And actually, I put together an iCal. I, and there should be a link on the Twitch. Somebody recommended I put together an iCal. Uh, Twitch TV, C Sharp Fritz, um, and it should be linked here on the wall. If I scroll down here, there we go. Um, ta -ta, I will match the first. The stream is maintained in an online calendar you can subscribe to. So I put this link here. Um, you know what? Let me copy that link location. No, no, no problem derailing me. Please derail me. I am all about the derailing. Let's add this as another question here on my frequently asked questions so that our bot knows how to answer this question. When does Jeff stream? Uh, Jeff streams regularly on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Ooh at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, subscribe to his iCal at, and then there's a lovely link. Added schedule. All right, that didn't format properly. Darn it! Because I forgot an asterisk. All right, so that fires, right? Remember, this fires off now because I saved, triggers a webhook, that triggers an Azure function, that triggers a rebuild of the Q&A that the bot listens to. I say it's no-op, but it's too much fun to say noop. Okay, Suze, do you prefer noop or no-op? I see the two O's, and I, think, and I immediately think noop. That's just me. Da -da -da -da. There we go. So now... Oh no! It, it's... 
the bots are not working again. Yeah. It's connected, but it's not listening. This is annoying. You know that? I feel like there's almost a reconnect there that needs to be handled. Because even though it's listening to the room, it's not actually doing anything. Antoine, 26. Welcome. Because Antoine, 25, was busy doing something else. I'm new to GitHub, so how can I upload a project or file on it that I created? Um, there's GitHub for Windows is a great plug is a great tool that you can use for that. Visual Studio, both Visual Studios, whether it's Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio 2017, has the capability to hook up and handle those types of things. So that's working. So it's trying to handle it. Yep, there it goes. Responded. GitHub Desktop is the newer version of that. Yeah. They've... Uh, there we go. Alright. So, let's look at the next question we have here. So, I, I like the idea of CQRS pattern for our wiki, but it's a little bit further off. Next comment here. My articles. Allow authors to list your articles. So... This feels like like an author profile page that'll list the articles that they're currently managing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and kind of merge it with my author page comment. You should, you should bit.ly that calendar link. No. Why is it pasted twice? Because um, GitHub made it into Markdown and didn't uh, didn't handle it very well. There's another issue with the Fritz bot we need to fix. And uh, I got an unable to find suitable answer answer to Pesum's question. So there you go. We'll come back and work on that. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to mark this as a duplicate and merge it. So I'm going to do this. I like this idea, and we'll merge it with is it uh, what is it author pages all right so to do, 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 do oh wait that's article status wrong one wrong one this isn't it I clicked on the wrong question this one yeah uh -huh. Labels, duplicates. I like this feature. And, uh, and want it on the author page. We'll merge this with... And it was six, I think? Yeah, there we go. I'm going to take this over here, there. And this was uh, from, and how is it you list author names? Um, it's not at, is it? No. How is it I list author names on GitHub issues? usernames do I work from Seattle no I do not <clears throat> I'm, I live and work from Philadelphia I love saying it like the uh, like the radio people do uh, task list tables issue references username reference re mentions yeah it's why am I not getting that person's name? Avandro. I want to make sure I give proper... <clears throat> proper uh, credit here. There we go. Alright. Um, CICD and Azure Container Services. Love it. 
Let's do it. I think that's another stream that we'll do with some of our VSTS. I um, think they need to be on the project, probably. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yep. Um, let's see. All right, so those need a wiki not found page, convert to a progressive web app. All right, so we're, we're moving along here. I think we've triaged the questions on those. All right. Hey, there's Avandro. Thanks for joining us uh, this morning. Um, I love your questions. I think they're great enhancements, and I want I, I want to get some of our basic features nailed down. Um, a PWA is a progressive web app, right? Um, and it's it's a way for you to build a web application so that it looks like a traditional application but is handled by a browser. So um, Google has some great, uh, they have some great documentation for how to make a website feel like a great application on an Android device. And um, Edge, uh, Mobile Safari, uh, a lot of the other browsers support these capabilities so it's real easy to light these up inside your web application by just adding a couple features. Um, my friend uh, Chris Love is an expert at building this type of thing, and I'd like to bring him on as a pair programmer at some point to help us with this. Um, speaking of pair programmers, I can announce, I can announce that Tuesday next week, The man from Stack Overflow, you, if you've asked questions about C Sharp on Stack Overflow, there's a high likelihood that this guy, John Skeet, has answered your questions. John is a tremendous developer, very nice guy, and he's done a lot of work around making date and time handling a lot easier for folks in C Sharp. So we're going to have John join us on Tuesday next week to pair program and work through some of the date and time questions and... Uh, scenarios that we have here on the uh, on the wiki project so we'll walk through that and um, John will be be joining us he'll of course answer questions from folks in the chat room uh, it'll be at our normal time since since John's over in the UK it works out perfectly for him um, to have a after lunch uh, discussion with us so uh, I hope you join me on Tuesday next week, and uh, John will be here as well. Apple is up, uh, upgrading their PWA support. It'll be, it's really nice. Uh, Aspiring DevOps Guru says, makes the user experience tolerable for offline or degraded internet connections. Yes, absolutely. C Sharp doesn't throw exceptions for John Skeet. Isn't there a board somewhere with John Squeet, John, John Skeet, very similar to Chuck Norris, um, right, it's uh, uh, quotes, something like that, John Skeet memes, John Skeet facts, here we go, now with official sanction edited, you may enjoy these facts, um, John Skeet is immutable. If something's going to change, it's going to be after the. Be, it's going to have to be the rest of the universe. I feel like I want to copy these down and create a Skeet command for the bot to respond to, so that while John's on with us, we can uh, we can fire some John Skeet comments in the chat room. When you search for Guru on Google, it says, did, "says Did you mean John Skeet?" <laughs> John Skeet has already written a book about C Sharp 5. It's currently sealed up. In three years, Anders Halsberg is going to open the book to see if the language design team got it right. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not a bad idea. Here's what I'm going to do. I think that... Uh, here's what I'm going to do, because I, I think this will be fun, um, and, and it would be great to, to share with John. We already have a quotes command in the chat box. If you take a look here, uh, wait, it's, oh, wait a sec. I'm in the feature bot. No, 
Not even that one. In fact, let's get rid of this. That's a bad branch. Fritzbot. That's where we are. And if you go down into chatbot, commands, there is a quotes command. I think we can duplicate that and put a series of uh, quotes out there. So let's say Fritzbot needs a skeet command. I think that's something that if, and I was talking about pull requests, if somebody would like to take a look at that, you're more than welcome. Submit a pull request and we'll definitely review that here. We're going to have to review it on Saturday so we can get it in before John's with us on Tuesday. So take a look. You're welcome to submit a pull request and I'll review it on Saturday. Um, there's a Discord attached to the uh, to this stream. You're welcome to jump on the Discord, talk to some of the other folks that might be in the chat room here. I monitor it and I jump in um, and answer questions on there. But uh, if you'd like to build this out, you're more than welcome. Um, should be able to clone the uh, quote command and build a very similar interface. Let's call it that. All right. Uh, hey, Aaron. Um, we are going to do some work on our wiki project today. So we just announced that John Skeet's joining us. I'm not converting to a PWA today. I want to add some of these other features. I'm not going to, I don't want to get into authentication. I don't want to get into search, but there was a wiki page, not found page. Um, see, we comments in issue 14. Issue 14, let's come back to that. Issue 14. Oh yeah, here, this is a good one. Um, I don't agree, I think my format proposal, a binary DB, is wrong. Let's use a database project in Visual Studio. Okay, let's, uh, we could switch to SQL Server 2017, preferring a Docker container. Okay, easy maintenance, we can use project type with database project in Visual Studio. We can version and track changes in GitHub. Using Docker Compose, we can build the database project, we can create a container, and we can deploy the DAC pack in the container. The data uh, could be disposable or pers persistent storage. Okay. We can execute an initial load of master data. Um, yeah. Using a SQL script file. Now this is actually, this is actually something that um, that our friend Eldorian um, has been asking about is how can we do this? We can create a test project, we can write more main user stories and automate it using SpecFlow. Yes. We can collect the results and present it in some dashboard. True. Uh, more complex to implement. Um, yes. Once again, love these ideas. Let me get on the other side of, of MVP here because because of how I have for for our project here, our very simple project. I just have, you know, a couple models and my application DB context is not database specific. So we should be able to take a whole stream here at some point and say, okay, now let's adapt and use SQL Server. And we can start to take advantage of that. Uh, Twitch lib causes a lot of platform not, ex not supported exceptions to be thrown, which are handled on startup. That could be the reason for the slow startup. Uh, you know what? I might be on an older version of Twitch lib that we would want to update as well. Let's come back to that. All right. Um, let's take a quick peek here. My viewer count is it's not connecting and staying up to date. There we go. I bet my follower goal, there's a signal R process in here that should be attempting to reconnect and keep those things current, but it doesn't appear it. All right, so I'm, I'm going to say to this, uh, love this idea. Let's get the basic functionality working and then we can um, 
we can add SQL Server as a provider that a an implementer, let's call them, uh, can choose to use with the wiki. I love this idea. It's a great idea. Um, it's not a project. Good first issue, help wanted. Um, I don't think this is a... It's an enhancement. Let me mark that. There we go. Twitch lib 201 is the latest NuGet version. Of, yeah, I'm using a, an older version. So, and it's fine. That's great that they're updating because um, I learned from our friend Fierce Kittens that they're deprecating the older, the, all of the older API versions, five and and older. Um, so, all right. So I want to first address. We need a page not found. Yeah. Uh, API versions 3 and 5 are being deprecated. They're both already deprecated, yeah, but they're going to be cut off. Right? They're, they're no longer going to be answering. So we're going to need to make sure that we're off of that. So our, our wiki is very simple. Let me start this so you can see what this looks like. So this runs all on .NET Core, so it should run on Windows, Mac, and Linux with no issues. Um, this is starting in Chrome because I have Chrome configured as my um, as my browser of choice right now. All right, so I've got the basic, very basic uh, Bootstrap interface here. I've got an edit link, and I can search and go off to other pages. Um, I can click edit here, and I have a nice editor. I can edit content. This is my first edit. Woot. Let's bold and italicize that. Save. Oh no! That's not going to work. There's something to fix. So my save operation on the edit page. Hmm. So we have a little bit of a routing issue here. Um, no page named index matches supply values. All right, let's take a look at that. So my uh, so I'm using in ASP.NET what are called razor pages, and they're it's a very page centric way to interact with uh, with my application. On my edit page, um, I had to ASP.NET authentication provider contrib to fix their Twitch provider because it didn't. Like how the new Twitch endpoints correctly. Ooh. All right, that doesn't sound fun. Um, all right, so button save. All right, so this should post back to this page, right? Because this is form post, all right? So it 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 did post back to edit. Let me see. Where is it? It's not even showing me here. The, the beginning of the exception. I'm going to click show the raw exception. And that tells me nothing. Where did my redirect happen that it's a little upset with here? So I'm going to click down into edit. Let's see. Um, there's the article. So when we get the page, I don't need that. Here it is, post. So if it's valid, it sh if it's not valid, it should return the page. Sad trombone. Yeah, right? Be nice if I had stuff like that handy. Right? Come on. That's better. Um, entity state modified, save changes. Did it save the changes? Let's confirm that. Right, so if I do a refresh, it... It sure looks like it saved the change. Look at that. When I click that, it, it's not even going back to the home page. So I've got some routing issues here, but it sure looks like it saved properly. Okay. Um, does Jeff have a soundboard? No, but I need one. And that didn't get picked up by the bot either. So there's... There's definitely something here with 
There's definitely something here where my bot isn't staying connected to Twitch. Right? Yeah, that isn't even being answered. Alright. So let's take that as an issue. I'm not going to address it right now. And yes, I do need a soundboard. It would be amazing. Fritz.stringtools. Let's create a bug just so we have it. Fritzbot doesn't stay connected to services. Um, the bot silently drops its connection to Twitch. Perhaps Mixer also. All right. Need to schedule a 24-hour stream so we can get stuff fixed. <laughs> That's a big issue. That's a big issue. All right. So I've got some routing issues here we need to address. And I'm also seeing... I had that carriage return in here, and it didn't save that carriage return as well. So... Let's, um, routing is a little strange. No, routing needs help. Um, doesn't route properly between services, between pages. Okay, so that help command did answer. Oh my gosh, how long ago was that? It picked that up, but it picked up a parenthesis on there. Hmm. 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 All right, one more issue. Uh, carriage returns in uh, editor aren't persisted. Right, that's a bug. Let's mark some of these others as bugs. Yep. Oh, what was that one? Article view read count. Show the number of views read to an article. That's a cool idea. I like that also. I like that. All right. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on with our routing here. When I mouse over the top here, over this, it should really go to the home that right at the base of the website, but it's not. There is something magic with the help command on Mixer. It's not a bug. Okay. You probably need to replace... Yes, I agree. I want to I want to address these routing issues first. So let me go to my page layout. That's where that um, title in the corner is. That. I don't want it to go to slash index. I want it to go to... I want it to just go to slash. Let's see if that works. No, it's not. It's still going to slash edit. All right, you know what? It's too bad about you. There we go. That works now. All right, home. Home should go to the same page, but it's going to slash index. If I click edit there, that's going to the wrong page. Home should go to tilde index. Save that. So that works, and that works. Okay. What do we got here? So the music is... Alright, so you're getting the messages? Fantastic. Cray Nation BV. Hello? Am I in the Seattle? No, I'm not. Jaw Raid. Sharp jaws for everyone. <laughs> Am I being raided? Fantastic. Welcome. Rating with a party of 13. Rawr! Great to see you. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, from... From uh, Little Dinked in that stream over there. That's terrific. I'm not familiar with Little Dinked. Mixer Lib wins. Yes, it does. Uh, 
There's our friend Isaac. Good morning, Isaac. So check out Little Dink Stream. Thank you so much for rating. Hand over the C sharp and no one gets hurt. <laughs> Thanks, Gwen Earth. Um, we're working on this uh, ASP.NET Core application to present just a wiki for us. Good morning, Cray Nation BV. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate you joining us here in the chat room. And everybody who came over on that raid, thanks for joining us. Um, so I'm trying to figure out um, some of the routing that I have around this. It's not behaving quite right. Um, if I click save here, is that gonna work? Yeah, it's, it's not routing properly back to my index page which I think is, here it is, redirect to page index. Hmm, yeah, I totally get everything that's going on. Fantastic, please leave dinked. What's the matter with dinked? That's okay. Already following, terrific. <laughs> um, I don't wanna redirect to the, to so much to the index page. I wanna go back to, um, the page, the view page for what I'm currently looking at. Neo Knight, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us on Twitch. Um, I feel like that music question should have more than a 37% confidence. I agree, and there's more that we can do to train our cognitive services. Um, we'll get into that. We'll take a look at that a little bit more. Um, I, I agree, there's more we want to do there. To, to train questions. But I want to work a little bit here on um, on our wiki today. Um, the folks on Reddit were annoyed that both Brendan and I were working on bots yesterday. Sorry, Reddit. Um, um, need some chicken first. Go run to the gym like you promised us. <laughs> um, all right, so this is... I don't want to redirect back so much to the index page, but I want to redirect back to this page for the article that was being worked on. So I want to redirect to, mm, let's look at our routing, all right? Let's close all but this. Um, yeah, fine, whatever. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Here we go. So I created this routing that says, if somebody requests just a topic name, route to the details page. So there you go. I don't have an index page right now. So maybe, yeah, look at the trace output for the route request logs. So here, let's let's take a look. If I scroll up here, page action re executed, edit. Yeah, no page named index. There, there is no index page. So I feel like I want to route, I want to route to details and I want to default it to the home page. So let's add that so that every time that there's a request for options for, for index, we go back to the home page. Ace Flame Seer says, Reddit is always mad. I think that's, I think that's what Reddit's purpose is. It's, it's, Reddit is the place where everybody gets angry, right? Um, that's what it feels like, right? So let's add a page route. So the page name I want to go to is details. And the route that I want to handle is um, slash index. And I, oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, no, actually I need to get rid of that. Make it this get rid of that. Now why is, my, why is that in white? That doesn't make sense. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Oh, uh, I didn't end this quote. So now let's go, if I say index, I don't want it to just go to details. I want it to go to, um, I wanted to go to, I think it was homepage. Right, if I go to just details and I don't pass in a topic name, I think it actually defaults to the homepage, doesn't it? 
Yeah, there we go. All right. So actually, I don't even need to do that. I can do this. And that should hand it, handle it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm installing Turbo Pascal. It was easier. <sighs> Wait till I have Anders on stream, and then you can you can fire that comment in there. I don't have Anders scheduled, but there's definitely there's definitely a time and a place that I want to have Anders on stream with us. If they were saying good stuff, no one would read them. Would, uh, no one would read Reddit. Ah, good point. Dr. Cactus. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, okay, Dr. Cactus, I'm going to put you in the lead for today's cool uh, cool handle in the chat room. Uh, anywhere we can find the video for the intro to ASP.NET Workshop you mentioned in your channel description. So here's what you can do, Dr. Cactus. <coughs> Ask a question in the chat room. There's, okay, so standby reloading, there's the link, but you can say, where is the ASP.NET workshop? And if the bot was properly responding on Twitch, it would give you the answer. And it's not! It's not. Something's hanging. That stinks. If the bot was running properly, it would answer and tell you. But yes, uh, Standby Reloading has the link there so that you can go check it out. It should be there. Better open up a ticket. I know, I already did. I already did. Um, oh, and the Mixer Lib does work. Look at that. All right, I'm going to also open an issue over there on the... Uh, on the stream tools project for formatting and handling the markdown uh, issues. Fritzbot needs to handle markdown. And I'm gonna make that a bug. It's, an, it's a, I'll mark it as help wanted. There we go. All right, always opening issues. Bad bot. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for trying, Fritz bot. Yeah, it's trying. All right. Um, let's see, where am I going here? So that route, I, I don't have a page, an index page. So everywhere where it's referencing the slash index, there we go, now it's handling the questions. Yeah, John has an amazing li library out there that works great for Mixer Chat. Um, I'm gonna find everywhere that it's referencing slash index, and I wanna change that. So here's create. Let's change that instead of redirect to index, let's make that details. I'm gonna pin my find results so I can go through and address these. There we go. Um, delete, let's have it instead go to details and let's change this back to homepage. Uh, redirect to page index, we'll have that go, yeah, back to the details page so it goes to the homepage. Edit, we'll have that do the same thing, go to details. And then inside edit, I don't want it to go to the index, I want it to go to this page. So I don't want it to do a redirect to page. There's actually another method here that'll do uh, return redirect. And I believe we can give it a URL, there it is. So the URL I want it to go to is actually slash and then the topic of this article because our topic is the URL. Super solid documentation, the documentation on John's mixer lib is amazing. I mean, very well done, you know? I, I can't compliment him highly enough. It is really good. Um, article dot topic. So now it should redirect appropriately to that. Fix that, there we go. Um, all right. See if we can if we have that working, and if the edit appropriately brings me back to the read page, 
for the page that I'm editing. Services at MVC at Razor Pages options. Options with Razor Pages at content root. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Second, edit. If I click save, it comes back to that page. All right. Maybe I don't need to come back to slash homepage if I'm on the homepage. Let's put a quick detection in there. Um, let's say if it equals homepage, right, then we'll just go to that. Otherwise, article dot topic. That's a semicolon. That should be a colon. And I think I need to put those in parens. There we go. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. All right, cool. So I think my edit page works nicely. I probably want to do a similar redirect for, uh, for the create page. Let me wander over to create. So I don't want it to just redirect to details. I just want to do a redirect to slash and then the article topic name. Article dot topic name. Uh, oops, that shouldn't be an app. That should be a dollar. So I get string interpolation. Uh, just topic. My bad. There we go. What is the wiki for? Um, Neo Knight, this is, this is intended to be a, a very simple sample for folks who are just learning ASP.NET Core. And, and they can see very easily how to build web pages, um, how to interact with a database, without getting into a lot of business logic, right? Business logic and some of the, some of the complexities of building like a store app. Um, get into business logic and managing some of those things get, that gets a little bit tricky. This is also going to give us a foundation for some of the pair programmers, some of the guests that I bring on stream, to show some of the things that they want to talk about. So I had some of the folks from CouchDB that wanted to show us how to use CouchDB, and I didn't have a good database project that they could help with to show how to use that. Well, with this wiki project, we can very easily create a CouchDB provider that will show here's how to interact with CouchDB, here's how to tune for it, and work and provision and use that feature nicely. Yep, there we go, Isaac, you're right. We'll, um, Isaac's on a, is going to be a future guest. We'll show how to bring App Insights into this project so that uh, some of the questions that we had earlier, somebody was suggesting be nice, uh, oh, it's on the issue list. It'd be nice to show the number of views um, that a page has. Well, we can use App Insights to collect that information and maybe even read that and put it right on the page. How often, how often do you use Web API compared to MVC? I use both about the same. Um, Web API is great for, um, for doing those headless types of interactions, creating APIs that, will, that I want my JavaScript to interact with. Um, there's another one, some friends who are, uh, who work on Angular. Um, they're going to join us and they'll show us how to take some of the features here and, and Angular, Angularify? Inject the Angular framework and make this real nice interface with Angular. But it's all about starting at this base level and let's add new capabilities, slowly and surely, to, uh, to this very simple read-write database project. All right, so I think my create now, it should work a little bit better. Isaac says, I tend to use spas for my apps these days with web API services. There you go. So a spa is a single page application, and it's really intended to be very JavaScript heavy on the front end. And uh, you end up with an API on the, on the back of that that folks can connect to. Uh, Angularificate. Now that sounds like a, a George Bushism, George W. Bushism, if I ever heard it. I want to Angularificate this application. 
That's not a bad idea. Um, I don't have a create button. We're going to need to add a create button, but if I just navigate to create... Well, first off, I don't like this layout. Let's see if we can clean up that layout a little bit. Um, I should be able to just F7. Ah, there we go. Um, there's a new hotkey in Visual Studio. F7 will get you into... from uh, In Razor Pages, it'll get you to the Razor Page or into the Page Model. Um, these are all call MD4s. I want it to be the full width of the page, so let's make it uh, 12. There we go. That's better. Topic. Second topic. And we still have to figure out why the published isn't working right. Today is the... Right, I should, can I pull this down? There we go. It's the fifth, and I do need to specify a time, so I'm going to specify it is 11.23. This is my second topic. Create, and it comes to second topic. Good. I'll go back to home, and it does go properly here, but I have no way to get back to that second topic page. Um, I have high hopes for Blazor. I'll be happy when I can get away from Angular, React, View, choose your JavaScript framework of the week. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. Blazor is our C Sharp to WebAssembly project. It's a very cool project. It's strictly an experiment at this point. Depending on the feedback we get, um, it may become a full supported product. Stay tuned on that. I generally use vanilla JS without frameworks. Would you recommend Angular to me? Is it overkill? Depends on what you're doing. Angular is definitely a framework that optimizes and makes it easier to, to jump right into building some of the user interface stuff. F7 does the same for WinForms. Yes, it does. Uh, the Bob NL. The Bob. Great to see you, the Bob. Um, so it's it's up to you. It's really a question of how much how much of a framework do you need. Um, so I think I have the create working the way that I want it to at this point. But I need a create button in my layout. So let's go over to layout. Um, so here's the nav bar. On the top is core wiki. And I want to have over on the far right, I want to have a link to create new page. Um, so let me create a link. Um, let's see, ASP page. And this will go to slash create. Yeah. Create new page. And I want to have this float on the right. Isn't there a bootstrap to have this on the right? Uh, thank you for providing. No problem, uh, Barga. I'm happy to help with that. Uh, John Papa has some decent live stream videos with Angular. He does. Uh, John John streams every now and again uh, on Twitch. Go ahead and check him out. He's been working on a couple of projects over there. Um, and I encourage you to tune in. He's got some great content that he's building. Uh, what's the input on the date HTML field? Using input date should allow for date only. It's a date time though. Right, where'd that go? Uh, published. Right, so ASP4, this will turn it into a, um, a date time because it's a date time. This published property of my model is a date time, so it'll create a date time label. We'll figure out how to clean that up in a little bit here. Um, all right, so that's my layout page, and I, this should now hang on the right side. Now, you can edit your razor pages without, uh, that's not right, without having to, um, without having to recompile your application. I'm going to move this down one. Let's see if that works a little bit better. That, that doesn't work either. Because um, I really want this to float, oops, I want it to float on the right side. So it's not right. Um, is it text? Text right? And I think I also want to put class nav on it so that it 
that's not either. Quest nav bar. Is it nav bar? Nav bar right? Is that the one I want? There it is. But it's still not... It's not justified just the way I want it to. Is it nav bar? This is the way we program with Bootstrap, right? We just start adding CSS classes and seeing if it works. No. It's not centering and lining up th th that way. Pull right. Uh, file type for razor files. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, boy. Yeah, CSHTML is a razor template. And razor is, um, is a way for us to write HTML intermixed with C sharp. So whenever I use an at sign, it it tells ASP.NET Core flip context and anything after the at sign is C sharp. So the Razor template, the Razor interpreter knows how to turn all of this into um, into C sharp commands to output content and intersperse my C sharp appropriately. It's very similar to what the the same type of programming constructs you have with PHP. Um, if I remember correctly, the datetime field has a default in the class. Yes. So if you remove it completely, it should auto set. I think that needs to be a UL with an IL. Ah, okay, I think you're right. Maybe in 10 years we'll have drop down bar and live preview for those classes. <laughs> there, well, there is. I thought there was a live preview for some of these, but it's... Mm, all right. So I'm hearing what standby reloading is saying. So let's make this another UL and put an LI on this one. And I'm going to put this class. I'm going to cut this, put it up here. And then I'm just going to grab this and move it. Not there. Right there. Let's see what that looks like. Helps if you save the page, huh? There it is. That's better. Uh, get bootstrap docs, components, navbar text might work to what? Might work to what? I'm happy with how that is. That's fine for right now. All right. I'm going to commit those changes. Let's get back into my core wiki folder. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, updated to fix routing. And routing, it's number 20. Word class UI design there. World class UI design. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> when are you coding that lonely developer site? Yes. Um, actually, so regarding design, um, I've reached out to, to an MVP in Sweden, um, um, Jessica Engstrom, and uh, I've invited her to join us. Um, we'll, we'll see if, uh, if she's able to join us and work on some design things here. Show us how easy it is to improve Bootstrap user interface design. Okay. So that looks good. Let's make sure that this gets closed. There we go. So I'm going to close that. Uh, carriage returns. I want to fix this one. This feels like an easy one. So let's go over to edit. Now, when the content is posted, does it have a carriage return in it? Let's take a look. See, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. I expect to get some royalties. <laughs> um, all right, let's click edit here. Now, it does have the carriage returns. Look at that. Interesting. Right, let's view that. Um, right, look, there, there is... 
Yeah. We're not too bad here. Next edit. Save. Let's see. So if I look at the article, and I look at the content, it does have carriage returns in there. So I think... I think we just need to work on this inside of our Markdown Tag Helper. So that's on my details page. If I look at the details page, have I been to the Redmond office? Yes, I have many times. Um, I'm actually going to be there in two and a half weeks, three weeks, three weeks. I'll be there again. Um, and I, when I'm out there, I actually will be doing that. Uh, I'll be doing the stream from the Channel 9 studios. Yep, I need to replace those with uh, appropriate breaks. So that is here with the Markdown Tag Helper. So this isn't... Hmm. What happens if I say normalize white space true? Does that do what I want? Nope. Nope. So it does feel like I need to I need to put those carriage returns in there. So let's do this. Where was it? Dot replace. That's not how you spell replace. All right. And it's a uh, yeah carriage return like that. And I want to replace that with br. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, are your past broadcasts saved so I can watch this from the start? They are. Um, you can find my past broadcasts on YouTube. Um, and they're also available on... You're on Twitch. On Twitch, you can see the VODs there as well. Um, this should be straight... Right, it doesn't like that. Right, it's just formatting. It's out literally. Right, outputting that directly. And that feels bad. Let's get rid of. What happens if I flip that to false? Nope, that doesn't fix it either. All right. Hmm. HTML raw. Yeah. You can convert the all knowing. According to the all, you can convert the markdown string to HTML using strike and then get plain text using HTML jelly. Oh, dear lord. No. Ugh. If I do HTML, I think standby reloading is on the right path here. I don't like using HTML raw inside of a tag helper. It works, but that feels dirty to me. So, that Markdown Tag Helper is coming from our friend um, is coming from our friend, friend uh, uh, oh my gosh, Westwind. Rich, he's in Hawaii. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, no. This one. There he is, Rick Straw. That's it. That's why I didn't know it was Rich. It's Rick. Uh, markdown parse, markdown parse HTML string. Da, 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 da. It doesn't handle the carriage returns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here we go. So this is what he does. So he's already trimming and replacing it with the carriage returns. Um. But he's not turning it back. What happens if I use that syntax, right? We had tried this previously. I'm gonna, just for giggles, pull that out. If I turn this back into a div, 
right? I think that's... Isn't that what he did? No, markdown, markdown equals. Ugh. And if we say model.article... Not model state. Uh, was it content? Is that it? Yep, content. All right. Stop it. Go away. If I do it like that, maybe use some HTML sanitizer. Well, that's why I'm using... Nope, that doesn't work either. Ooh. Details model does not contain a, de contain a definition for model. Excuse me. Oh, look, that worked without changing anything. Look at that. Uh, let's see. If I, now if I do the normalize white space. How does that... I don't see any difference. All right, so that fixed. Divs are not void types. You'll have to use a. You'll have to have a closing tag. Um, no, I'm okay. All right, so I fixed my carriage return issue. Let's commit that change. Uh, that's fine. Fixed carriage returns, and that is uh, 21. All right. Good. All right. Buzz sawing through this. Now try script window alert hey script as content. You really think that's going to get through? My amazing bit here. The cross site scripting. Script window alert. Cross site scripting for the win. Safe. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! Blocked. All right. Exactly, we got that fixed. All right, so we have a way to edit and maintain this home page, but I have no way to get to the other pages, right? Um, and there were some comments here about having featured articles, search, article ratings, that'd be cool. Um, let's... I want to work on search, and I want. I think, f hmm, I think featured articles might be might be good to put on the home page. Let's work on featured articles here on the home page. See what we can do to make that happen easily. Um, that feels like that feels like something. Almost like a directive that I want to have on the page that uh, that output appropriately. There, uh, Cicero asks. There are three big teams at Microsoft, right? Operating system, development team, cloud team, and applications team. No, um, it's much, 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 much more complex than that. There are overall divisions. Um, uh, there. It, was called Cloud and Enterprise, but uh, the leader of that division, Scott Guthrie, just rechristened it Cloud and AI. I'm not sure if it was Scott or if it was Satya. But that's all of our cloud, our development tools, and now all of our Windows Server capabilities, as well as, yeah, yeah, all of, and as well as some of the artificial intelligence 
uh, development features that we're building. Um, there's all, there's I'm not sure what the new devices division is, but that's where Xbox, Surface, and those types of things are. Um, there's of course an office division. There are um, there's divisions that work on our web properties, divisions that work on all kinds of different things. But as far as software products that that you work on as a developer, you're thinking mostly of Scott Guthrie's division, where all of that stuff lives. And inside of there, we have DevDiv, which works on Visual Studio, .NET, and the various development frameworks. There's the Azure group that manages all of the cloud facilities. Windows Server group is part of that now, and they manage, of course, all the features for Windows Server. There's an AI team in there, a whole bunch of stuff. It's, it's very complex. Um, and I don't have an org chart in front of me to make to verify that I'm saying everything right. I know I've got a couple of Microsoft friends in the chat rooms, uh, right? I'm I'm not going completely off, right? I'm I'm somewhat close to the org chart. All right. Um, so as far as putting featured articles on here, that feels like something that's a little bit more processing that I want to put on a page. And, and there's, uh, oh, yes, a big support division. Well, there's, right, that support group is part of part of uh, cloud and AI. Um, but yes, there is a, a definitely a comport, this customer support division. They're not just in India. There's a group, um, there's a couple groups in the United States as well. Um, but for this, I've got this, mm, it's almost a partial that I want to do to show last changed articles I think and they're featured articles is something but I, I and I also need to somehow have links to wiki pages let's think about this featured I want to do if I'm on the home page I want to do like the last updated pages for right now um, which would require another request to the database So let's do this. How do we want to do, right, have a homepage specifically know how to almost reach out and execute additional? A view all page, there's another good example. Um, uh, they call me a lot and want to help me remove viruses out. Oh, no, haha, <laughs> no, John. Those are scammers. I like the view all page. That's. Um, let's just put that together real quick. That definitely would help. Um, yeah, a razor page using entity framework. Let's start there. Um, and we'll have it go off of the list. And let's, let's call this latest. Latest changes. Let, yeah. And our model is going to be the article. Yep, okay, good. Script libraries, sure, right. All right, that's fine. Uh, here we go. So latest changes has an article we're gonna go get. Now, I don't wanna just go get the full list of articles. Let's um, order by descending our list of articles and these are these are link expressions our context is our connection to the database articles is a reference to my list of articles that is stored in the database and I want to say order those articles descending and I'm going to specify order it descending by the published date um, and you know what let's just take and I can specify how many of the, those articles do you want to present on screen. I'm going to say take 10, and then I'll end with to list async. Now, this isn't actually going to perform each one of these steps as separate requests to the database, right? It's not going to go select star from articles, select star from articles, order by descending, select top 10 from articles. No, it's not going to do that. It actually, what the link provider Right, and that's the name of the, the that piece of middleware that hides behind 
this link expression, what it'll do is it'll see these predicates on here. It'll grab all those predicates up and turn that into a single expression, and which will look something like select top 10 star from articles order by publish date. When, and then it'll execute that and then give me back a list. And because it's an asynchronous request, it won't block on the calling thread. So that'll give me my list of articles. Um, I'm okay with create new up here. Fluff, Fluffza, welcome. I appreciate the follow. Um, and I'm not even getting the log for the new follower here on on my bot. Yeah, it's just flat out, flat out blocking right now the the bot. That's not good. Um, I saw a tweet you made about having a stream with Jerry Nixon on UWP. Yes, Jerry's a good friend. I was on his radio show a few years ago when I was running NuGet. Any news about that happening? Would love to learn some UWP on stream. Um, you know what? We need to reach out to Jerry and see if see if he can do that. I am going to I'm going to take an action item here to make sure that I contact Jerry. So I have a number of invites extended out there that uh, I need to follow up on. And I, I really like the idea of having Jerry on to talk about UWP. Uh -huh. um, let's see where we go. Here it is. Um, and I need to invite, I still have to invite James Montemagno, uh, Jerry Nixon to Join us and talk about UWP with the wiki. Cool. Uh, it's, uh, thanks for the reminder, Lucius Fox. Appreciate that. All right, display name four. So I've got the published. I don't. Um, I want to have the published date. I don't even need a header for this on this table. Let's get rid of that. And let's reformat this. Let, we'll have the content. I don't even want the content. I want the topic. And then let's put the published right after it. And I don't even need a display four on that. So let's get rid of this. And uh, put a break here. And then um, do item dot published. Uh, shoot, how did we format that over on the details page? Let's use that same formatting. Ugh. Ugh. Whatever. I'll use that same. Oh no. Rats. Get rid of this. Hello. Okay. Item. I think the uh I think the power mode is interfering here a little bit. Let's make that a little bit smaller. So I'll make it an H, no, not an H6. Let's put a span on this. Class equals, isn't there like a smaller? Yeah, that works. Make this format a property on the model class. Um, you know what, this is, oh, oh, the format of the, of the, uh, that's not, I could, I could make it a property on it. Or I could create an extension method. Ooh. Smab says, this is a perfect fit for bootstrap for cards rather than a table. Love that idea. Love that idea. Oh my gosh. Uh, yes. Great. Let me make sure I'm using bootstrap for. Huh. Uh-huh. 
This is Bootstrap 337. So I would need to upgrade my Bootstrap to 4. Dead Inside Help. Okay, there's another great uh, handle today. I'm feeling great. Oh, I'm glad you are too. Uh, I couldn't think of another good username. That's all right. Uh, hi, and how and what are you doing? I'm I'm building a little uh, a little wiki web application here on uh, here with ASP.NET Core. Are you sure you're using Bootstrap three? Yes, I'm positive. Um, Right, if I look here at the CSS, 337. All right. So, yeah. What's NPM JS? What the heck is that? Uh, see, I've got all their distribution stuff here, and that's a bit annoying. Uh, I wonder. I installed... Package Manager. Nope, it's not on this one. Rats. There's a new Package Manager that we're using um, that will allow you to add just the features you need, but that's not going to work for me there. Tell you what, I'm going to come down here to my package, and I'm going to add as a dependency... Yep, Bootstrap. Give me Bootstrap 4. Save that go away. So that should install this into my node modules folder, right? So if I take a look at core wiki, I'm going to right click, uh, open folder in file explorer, you can't see it there behind my fat head. And there's bootstrap. Uh, I want to reach under the distribution. There's my CSS. And there's my JavaScript, no fonts. Interesting. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, don't understand any of that. I'm gonna learn how HTML works. Oh, okay. Yeah, Pac-Man is a package manager extension that we're starting to distribute. And you should see, I think it's in preview three, you'll see it pop up. Um, but it takes care of um, just adding those files that you want without having to go through all the rigmarole of Bower or NPM or Yarn. You can literally right click on, on a project and say, on a project folder and say, add this. Yeah, glyph icons are gone. They recommend Font Awesome now. So I'm going to need to add Font Awesome as well. Let's make sure we bring that in. Font, there it is, Font Awesome. Because it's awesome. And I love the autocompletes here in NPM. Pac-Man, that's a great name for a package manager. It is. Um, all right, so I'm going to delete all of these files. Yep. Cannot remove disk from disk. Access denied. You make me sad. Why not? I'll delete that. Goodbye. Fonts. Arrivederci. There we go. JavaScript, nice knowing you too. Good. Dist. Yep. Bye bye. All right, so now I have those folders on disk and they're here into my node modules because Visual Studio automatically installs that. Bower is deprecated too. Yeah, you know what? These things deprecate faster than we can get them integrated. There's Trace. Greetings from Germany. Good afternoon, Trace. Great to see you. We have quality options today. We call them quality options today, but in six months we're going to call them old beat up garbage. What is the wiki going to be for? Whatever you'd like. Really, this is intended to be more of a training, um, a, tr a training tool, right? We'll use it to learn a little bit. Maybe we use it to host some things. Maybe, maybe we can use it to host um, the questions that the bot listens to and answers. That would be neat. 
Uh, we have quality options. Oh, oh, the, I'm sorry, the Twitch quality. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I don't know why it comes and goes like that. I, I have to have an average of seven, is it 75 viewers each stream? And I need to stream, um, I forget how many dozens of hours each month, more than I do right now in order to, oh no, I do stream enough, but I need to have average like 75 viewers in order to be made a Twitch partner. So, all right. Um, so what I want to do is I want to copy over Font Awesome. Hey, Ark, is that Acker Commando? Welcome. Thank you for the follow over there on Twitch. I appreciate that. Yeah, Twitchlib is running a little bit slow getting data back from Twitch and the chat room. Yeah, that Twitchlib is kind of stuck listening over there. We're going to need to figure that out. Um, all right, so I want to migrate, I want to move everything that's in the dist folder over to underneath uh, my lib folder over here. Now, inside of the ASP.NET Core uh, project, there's this thing called bundle config. And bundle config will let me, um, will let me move files back and forth between different folders. So what I can do do I'm going to create another group here so instead of using grunt or gulp as a task manager to move things around um, I don't want to include I don't want to minify I want to and I don't want an output file name I want to just move I just want to move over everything Um, shoot, how did we do this in Stream Tools? All right, Stream Tools, we have a very simple bundle config that does this. Um, stream Tools, because I moved the SignalR stuff over. Here it is. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, output file name. So there we, oh, we're moving just the SignalR client. Hmm. Hmm. Just as I learned Gulp, everybody stopped using it. I know. What would you recommend as a good C Sharp IDE for Mac? JetBrains Rider or Visual Studio for Mac? I would recommend Visual Studio Code. <coughs> oh my gosh. My apologies. All right. I thought I could use bundle config to move an entire folder. bundle config move folder there's a hole in my microsoft hat really where oh my gosh look at that Woo. where the the green part of the logo yeah that's kind of cool whoa i've got a hole in my head look at that <laughs> all right and actually and my my shoulder here you can kind of see through that's all right. Um, do, 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 do. There is a way. Uh, let's see if we can not bundle config CS. Uh, bundler minifier. Here it is. Bundle into a single output file. Mm. Saving a source file retriggers rebundling automatically. Nice. Support for globbing patterns. Yes. Shows a watermark when opening a generated file. Task Runner Explorer integration command line support. Shortcut to update all bend bundles in a solution. Supports output file generation convert to gulp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's Cortana gathering information. <laughs> um, output file, output file. Yeah, this is bundling things into one file. I want to output. <clears throat> Does he have documentation over here? 
He does. Uh, the name of the file. Yeah. If the generated output file should be added to the Visual Studio project or not, defaults to false. Nope. I don't think we can use this directly. Because I want to copy over. Nope, and that's the old. Uh, and I want to write a gulp file just to do that copy. Uh, <laughs> What's the recommended way that people are doing this? Uh, move node modules. Hmm. How to access node modules from dubdubroot in ASP.NET. So I have seen folks say um, where they've added, added the node modules folder so that it could be accessed. Um, that's, yeah, automatically moving NPM packages, right? Serve from directory, yeah. This is this use static files and pointing over to specific. Until they have a new standard, I just copied the folders manually. What am I trying to do? Yeah, I'm trying to, I like this solution. And literally mapping those NPM files. Let me do this. Um, and I, it's, it, uh, you know what, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to extend this a little bit. I'm going to, let's get rid of this. This is a bad idea. So let me go back over to startup. So when you look at startup, and we configure the application, yeah, Right, we have this configure method, and the configure method defines how we interact with the HTTP pipeline. Right, each one of these things configures the different ways that files are processed and presented. Um, oh, I'm just over time here, but I'm gonna f I'm gonna finish this off. I'm gonna add this method: void serve from directory hosting environment string path. I'm gonna serve node package. Yeah, let's do that. And what we can do is we can specify, we're gonna use static files, right? I'm gonna actually list multiple ones of these. Let's see if we can get this to work the way I want it to. So if I have a new provider, and then specifies the root. That's fine. All right. The request path is going to be slash lib slash, and then I don't want the path. I want to have the package name because I'm going to reach down into node modules and I want to grab the package and find the dist folder and serve that. Same thing for font awesome. But oh, look at this. It doesn't have a dist folder. Oh boy. So I'm going to have to reference font awesome, and then it's like CSS, and there's the CSS, right? Yeah, there's a minified one there. F there's the fonts, okay. I don't need the less, I just want the CSS. All right, uh, package name, bool use dist folder. All right, so physical provider, Yep. So what you need to do is you need to specify, right? The physical file provider says, what's the root? Where are you actually looking at this? It's better to use the JS file if you're using Font Awesome 5. Which JS file? I don't see a JS file. It's not here in the CSS.
which font awesome I have the wrong version I must have font awesome 4 uh, let's take a look back at it yes 470 there's a font awesome 5 do tell I don't have 5 as an option nope not available. Do, 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 do. Uh, get started. Copy and insert the code. Oh, it wants us to actually reference and pull it directly from there and not use. All right. They don't use NPM either. Somebody else who doesn't like NPM. All right. So we'll get rid of that. I'll go into layout. And that should go with my scripts down here. Uh, you know what? Let's put it first. Right? Um, I'll put it right there. What? There it is. Hello? All right. Uh, 509, I need to upgrade. So that's annoying that that version number is burned into that script there. I don't want to have to update that and maintain that. Um, we'll figure that out later. I like saying that. We'll figure it out later. Um, all right, so the file provider... Um, I don't need the use dist folder. I can just always use dist. So this is what, f which root directory should we actually start serving from? Um, it's going to go from content root path. Okay, that's the base of our application. Um, node modules, and then I want to put onto that the package name. And then dist. All right. And the request path is going to be slash lib slash and then the package name. So now up here, I should be able to say app dot. Oh, shh. Uh, oh, okay, okay, hang on. Serve node package app env ugh, env bootstrap. So now I should be able to reference that. Uh, could be awesome if it grabs a new font awesome from NuGet. Yeah, NuGet doesn't support front front end packages anymore. You'll have to get a fresh link if you want to update uh, Fun Awesome anyway, since it has the integrity tag. Aha! Uh -huh. True. All right. Yep. All right. So that should work, and I should now... Let's get rid of that folder. So now I should be able... Um, I removed Fun Awesome, so you can go away. So now I should be able to serve dist CSS and then bootstrap min right if I go to my layout. Um, there's bootstrap JS. Uh, good. All right. And thank you for the follow. Uh, Amakusa. Is it A M A K U S A? I don't know. And Nanaquilla, thank you for the follows. Um, I really appreciate you joining us. I Okay, so bootstrap JS and then up here the CSS should be referenced. Bootstrap CSS, bootstrap min CSS. Fantastic. So those should all just work. Let's see if it wires up and presents my content appropriately using the new bootstrap. And looks good. All right, 
Um, I don't think that icon's gonna work. Oh no, that works. Good. Fantastic. All right, so let me. So backing up, um, I think Smab, you were suggesting, be great if we had uh, bootstrap f bootstrap cards, right? Was that right? Uh, B movie was lit. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for the follow over there on. Looks like it was on Twitch. And uh, uh, Moik Vin, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that on Twitch as well. Uh, let's go get Bootstrap and let's figure out how to use Bootstrap cards, you were calling it, right? Uh, huh, huh, huh. Yeah, cards. Terrific. Uh, is it content or is it components? Card. Uh, card is a flexible and extensible content container. Nice. Uh, it includes options for headers and footers, a wide variety of content, contextual background colors, and powerful display options. If, familiar, if you're familiar with Bootstrap 3, cards replace all panels, wells, and thumbnails. Okay. Div class equals card. Style equals a certain width. Image. Card image cap. Card body. Card title. Card text. All right, so let's start simple like this for each one of our wiki articles here on our latest page. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Latest changes, fine. Here's that page. So, all right, so Smab was saying let's not use a table. We'll get rid of that. Actually, I think we'll want the edit. And I think we'll want the delete links. We'll get rid of those. We'll get rid of these. All right. So that's the format that it was suggesting. So we have a div with a class of card. There we go. And a card body. So I think that the card body should really be, right, our, there we go, model, article, topic. Now why isn't, oh, you know what? Item.topic, because we're in a for loop. Yeah. Um, all right, so we have that and in the card body. Now I, I want to have like a footer that has the last published. Card title, card subtitle. Ooh, that's nice with the links at the bottom. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that, that's like a thing. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. I'm learning something. So do I put them out here? Nope, they go inside the card body. All right. Um, dun, 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 let's do this. So I'm going to cut these and place them right here. Back them up. Yeah, I think power mode is misbehaving. Because every time I paste, it flares. And then it takes a while to respond. So I will put this here. And then I should be able to put that there as well. Oops. Hold down the control and it'll copy while you drag. There we go. All right, so I have my card links. Maybe the subtitle? So if I, oh, and it's doing an H5 for the card title. All right, I'll steal that capability. Paste that there. End my H5 here. Now why did it? H6, and then what was the class on that? It was like, yeah, look at that. I'm learning. Look at this. I'm learning. At item dot, and then I've got that, you know what, let's just say published to short date string. All right. Let's see how that looks. And I want to have my latest changes on 
my menu bar here up at the top. All right, so there's home. Li a href equals. It's not even. I can. I can do the ASP page. And this is uh, latest changes. <clears throat> and say latest changes. If I refresh, there's latest changes. <coughs> okay. So I don't have borders on my card. My topic may be best in an H3 with a class of card dash title. Well, let's try that. So I will change this to an H3. And I, I want to have a border on my card. Why doesn't my card have a border like this one does? See that? Div class equals card. Hmm. All right, where is it? Card styles, background and color, border. There we go. Um, ooh. Use border utilities to change the border color of a card. What, what, how do I do that? So border utilities add to add or remove elements borders. Hey. So if I just do that. No, I didn't get the border. Border primary. Oops. This one. Nope, doesn't like it. Border radius. Use border utilities to add or remove elements borders. Choose from all borders or one at a time. I thought I did that. Excuse me. Oh my gosh. Got a terrible tickle. This isn't working the way that I thought it should. Alright. And I want to center everything in here too, in my card. And to be perfectly honest, I love that format right there. How do I do that? Is there... Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do those? Card border primary MB3. MB3. All right, sure, we'll do that. Nope, still doesn't work. <clears throat> Let's take a look here. Am I getting the bootstrap? Bootstrap JS. Why am I getting 337? <gasps> no. I'm still getting the old bootstrap. But I, de I deleted it here from disk. So much div soup with bootstrap. I can't disagree with you there. Um... How am I getting... All right, let's force a refresh. There we go. Now, bootstrap, dist, JS, bootstrap, JS. I can't find that. Bootstrapped, dist, CSS. Okay, okay, hang on. So that's going slash lib, bootstrap. <coughs> oh, I didn't restart since I made those changes. Uh, nibble. Thank you for hosting my stream with 17 viewers. Um, I really appreciate you hosting. Let me restart here so I get my my static uh, static pages connected up. Uh, and maybe, just maybe. Um, all right, what is what's happening when it's requesting live? Bootstrap dist CSS bootstrap CSS request starting. 
so it should have gotten it, right? Let's take a quick look over here. I'll refresh this. So Bootstrap CSS, it's not able to find. That's weird. Let's take another look at that change we made in startup. So serve node package app env startup. So it should have created a physical file path provider that goes to against content root path. You know what, let's put a break here and let's see what's actually going on. Restart. I do like the card header and it almost makes me feel like I want to have an a synopsis to have inside the card. I think that would be kind of fun to use. Um, so welcome uh, to our friends that just joined us from uh, Nibbles, uh, Nibble stream. Uh, my name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a program manager for Microsoft on the ASP.NET on the ASP.NET team, um, but I'm not working for Microsoft right now. I'm writing some code with you. Um, this is ASP.NET Core that we're writing, and I'm connecting up a, a very simple wiki. Um, and I'm trying to install the new Bootstrap, Bootstrap 4, from an NPM package. And I want to route my requests through my lib folder direct your, directly into my node modules folder. And it's not serving that quite correctly. Um, so this is going down into core wiki, core wiki, right? And then I want to have it reach into node modules, um, package name whatever the package name is, bootstrap in this case, dist. So if I combine that in my immediate window here, I should get node modules bootstrap. Well, okay, that's a problem. It's got the slash backwards. I don't wanna force the, the slash the correct direction here. I call it summary in my current site. That's, that's a good idea Call it to create a summary. Is that pushed on packaging? No, I don't want it to. You're, you're suggesting is the node modules content pushed, deployed when I package? It might be. I gotta look at that. Uh, da, 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 da. I've got four errors. Yep, not able to get to bootstrap CSS. Hang on, so if I go slash lib slash bootstrap, I'm getting a 404. And it should actually be mapping all the way down into, right? If I go there, nope, can't find it. Uh, yeah, that was it. Get lib bootstrap dist CSS bootstrap CSS. And it's giving me 404s. Uh, ho, 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 ho. All right, hang on. Let's let's think this through. Um, I don't know if the node fo folders are. They might be. You know what? They might. N I have to take a look at that. Um, because that could be a whole nother problem there. Right? If they're not being pushed. If they're not included in the project at packaging, methodology, that's rude. Why not just use CDNJS? Ah, yes. <laughs> that, because what happens if I'm not connected to the network, right? Or I'm behind a firewall and I don't want folks to be able to pull stuff from there. All right. Um, let's see here. This feels like it's a really simple, easy way to do this, but I would love for the node modules to come along and be deployed with my application. 
Um, but I f don't feel like this is the right way to do it. I And I feel like I'm going to have to write a gulp script to do that copy over and build build out my bootstrap folder. I hate having to bring in that extra feature just to do that. I'm already using a CDN for Font Awesome. You're right. Uh, yeah, all right. Let's get rid of this. You're right. Let's go with the simple solution and just copy in those folders. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this here even though I'm not really using it. Just because I think this might be useful at some point. So let's just create a new folder. And you're right about I am just using the font awesome. When you go to a PWA, you can just cache it. True. Um, da -da -da. You, I can have a local font awesome as well. Yes. So bootstrap. Let me just copy in those folders. That content. For these two... I'll go up here, dub dub root. Not that, not that. This one. Paste that in. Um, all right. So those are over there, and this should start working again. And hopefully we'll see the cards formatted properly. And then I think I need to end. I think I'm I've gone I've gone too far. Right, if I hard refresh. Oh, you know what? That layout was pointing to the dist folder, and there is no dist folder, it's just right on the root. So let's get rid of that. That. Go down here to the script. Get rid of that. I think that'll better. I have a random question that keeps me awake at night. When does the open with window go? Where does it go when you click somewhere else? The open with window. So if I right click and I choose, where are you talking about up here? This thing goes to amazing places. Rebel Girl, thank you for the follow. I'm not quite sure. What do you mean? Where does it go? Um, let me figure out why this isn't formatted properly. Did the nav bar change? Why am I not getting my... Ah, oh, come on now. Now the developer tools won't open. Why is it control shift I? Nav bar class has changed a bit. Oh, that's so nice of them. And this won't. F12, there it goes. Um, oh, browser link isn't responding. That's fine. All right, so we need to handle the nav bars differently, huh? All right. But do my do my cards load properly when I go there? Um Chrome, what the hell are you doing? If I go latest updates, that doesn't go anywhere. see what happened here it went to details not last updates uh, nope doesn't like that one either yeah yeah bad Jeff latest changes There we go. All right, now I've got those formatting nicely. Let me get rid of that vertical bar in the middle. That looks better. 
and I, I should probably make the the header um, a hyperlink to that page. So let me do that real quick. Um, let's go ASP page equals details. ASP route equals And it's actually, I want to have HP, ASP route uh, details. What's the name of topic name is what I want. And then I can do item dot topic. goes there but it's not the nicely formatted URL so you know what I'm just gonna um, I am just going to I'm just gonna make that an href these routing helpers are not very useful and if anything they're confusing there it goes good Maybe also zero pad the dates. Um, let me come back. Should have div header. Yeah, I like that better. What was it? Card header? I thought I saved. I'm, I'm hitting control S here, files. E. Uh, welcome, Games Talent. Um, all right. Should these go up here? I'm saving. I'm, I'm hammering control S here. Why aren't you saving? That's better. And then I would need some sort of stuff. Uh, maybe your pages should have a permalink field. I don't know. Maybe. All right, so that's nice. I want to have, what was it for the, uh, right, it was MB3. That's not bad. All right, we still need to fix the nav. So where was navbar? How does this change now? Navbar nav, navbar toggler. VI Tommy, welcome. Um, navbar require wrapping, smaller width on the cards. Yeah, we can. We can look at that. So navbar is navbar, navbar expand, navbar light. All right, let's go back to the layout and see what we need to change there for the navbar. All right, so nav class equals navbar, okay. Navbar, is navbar inverse still a thing? Navbar dark. Please tell me it's saved. It did. All right. Also, you have your subtitle in the card body instead of card header. I know. I know it is for right now. We'll move it. I want to get the uh, nav bar working properly here, right? Because it's it's not working. Uh, nav class, nav bar, nav bar dark, BG dark. Let's just copy that. All right, but I wanted it fixed at the top. Placement. Fixed top is just fixed top. Better, but I still have the, uh, 
the toggler not appearing properly. Ugh. Button, class, navbar, toggler, blah, 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 blah. Let's just copy that. Class nav item on the list items. Ah, do I need the container also? It's next to it. All right, so let's paste this in here. So I have the button. Yeah, I think power mode is getting in the way here, fellas. Um, I'm gonna have to turn that off, I think. All right, and then div class collapse navbar collapse. I can get rid of this. Oh, I can get rid of this whole thing here. And that container too, can I? Um, the brand. Ooh, ooh. Did I delete the brand? I think I deleted the brand. Yep, that right there. Let's bring that over here. Oh, come on. I think power mode is... Yep. this and that extra div don't need a container all right um, let's see navbar collapse and then there's the hidden brand I don't want it to be hidden I want it to always be there I think you can turn off power mode in the settings yeah um, let's do that That should help a little. Um, all right, so the links are nav items. All right. Um, collapse, nav bar, collapse, good. And then there's my brand, A class, nav bar brand, okay. Um, UL class, nav bar, nav, Mr. Auto, really? So it looks like I can get rid of this. And then my allies need nav item, which feels extraneous. You know you're in a nav bar nav. And then the links need to have a class of nav link, huh? All right. Um, you remove the collapser. No, it's right here. Nav toggler. Right there. I, I copied that in. There it is. It's not working just yet. <laughs> Real 10x developers use power mode. I know, wouldn't that be great? Hey, Slayer Darth, good to see you. Make the menu follow you when you scroll. Oh, yeah, I think I like it up there. But that's not working, and my brand isn't showing either. So I think I need to move this up here. So it shows at least... Um, <laughs> okay, div class collapse navbar collapse. Div class navbar collapse collapse. Okay. Um, hello, next 405. Um, UL class navbar nav. So we're trying to add. 
we're trying to update a project from Bootstrap 3.3.6 to Bootstrap 4 and having a devil of a time. I need to match IDs. Oh. Data target navbar toggler. Aha. All right. Get rid of that. Aria, Aria, Aria. Okay. So I need to put an ID on this. Right? Yeah. All right. But I want it expanded. Right? I mean, why is it expanded? True. That didn't do anything. Uh, data target, aria control, data toggle collapse, aria expanded true. Toggler. Navbar toggles are left aligned by default. They should follow a sibling element like a navbar brand. They'll automatically be aligned to the far right. Okay. Reversing the markup will reverse the placement of the toggler below our examples of different toggle styles with no navbar brand shown in lowest breakpoint. So if I shrink that, I'm still not seeing the toggler. Okay, now it appears with brand name shown on the left and toggler on the right. Ah, so it puts it before and it puts the toggle on the other side. How wide do I have to make this stupid thing? Oh, you know what? All right, hang on. This is because I have a second nav bar nav. And it's getting confused about what to do with it. Let's move this into here. Oh, no. I'm trying to control and it's And this search box is floating on the right side. Right, so form in line, what's my two, my LG zero? What's that? I don't know what it is, but I like it. That's after the UL. Is it just completely gone? Right, so if I shrink and the toggler pops up, yeah, it appears at the bottom. But that's inside of, oh, oh! Okay, so the div, it's inside the div, but it's next to the UL. Well, that's kind of what I had before, isn't it? Inside the div, but next to the UL. And if I use that, what's that do for me? No. <laughs> no. Still not. If I get rid of that, nope. I can't expand wide enough to make that toggler go away. Your data toggle in ID does not match. Yes, it does. Right, data toggle collapse. Data target nav bar toggler. Right, that's that thing. All right, let's go back over to the documentation. Let's make sure I've got this right. Um, uh -huh. Navbar, all right. Navbar dash toggler is the name of the button. Data target is navbar toggler demo two. And that's this right here. 
data toggle is collapse. And that's right here. Do I have that right? Navbars can utilize navbar toggler, navbar collapse, and navbar expand. That works, but this doesn't. What am I missing here? Uh, <laughs> navbar brand. put this next to each other so we can see because class navbar navbar okay there's a size whatever color background and I'm saying fixed top okay my brand navbar brand and then button navbar toggler type button data toggle collapse my data target and all that Aria expanded. I mean, I'll change that back to false. Wishes I would use line wrapping. There you go. It needs jQuery. jQuery's here. <laughs> it's a really old jQuery, but it's here. And it's not throwing any kind of an error message on the... Uh, indicating that it's using the wrong one. I'm using 2.2 .2 is the version that this looks like. And I'm not thrilled with that. I'd really like to use a more modern version, but it's going to be a pain in the neck to go get that right now. Cheers for word wrap. Thank cheers, you, standby by Cheers for word wrap. <laughs> Thank you. And actually, that puts you at the top of the the uh, right the top ten cheer list here. I'm sure they say three point something. I'm sure. Uh, you know what? Let's let's do this. Let's just put jQuery into our package JSON and copy it out. Yep. I'll do the exact same thing to copy that out. Node modules, jQuery, right? jQuery JS, jQuery min. I'll grab this, that, and the other, and copy those into my JavaScript, nope, my lib jQuery folder. Just overwrite that. Nope. Nope, I'm doing a hard refresh and it's not bringing in. And that jQuery version is 331. Really? 331. Let's make sure this is downloading the new one. Network. Do a hard refresh. jQuery 331 and it's not loading I mean that's sure working developers, developers, Eddie 22538 welcome don't use slim unless you want to use fetch API instead of dollar Ajax and a couple other things that got ripped out the navbar documentation had an extra class navbar expanded did it Stand by, let's go check. Okay. Navbar collapse. Uh, 
nav bar oh look at drop down okay that's an extra drop down menu in there for that I'm not doing that just yet I just want to do a normal nav bar at this point uh, no I don't have nav bar expanded try to copy in one of the example nav bars at the, at the top Navbar expand large. All right, that worked. All right. My create page isn't showing because I removed it. Hmm. Let's add that back in. What was it? Navbar right? Something like that? Should I just do float right? Let's do float right. Uh, li class equals nav item class equals nav link. Yes, I can do autocomplete on CSS classes. Yep, that's a feature in Visual Studio. It should also be in um, Visual Studio Code. My href is going to be uh, create create page. And it's not lined up quite right. Uh, let's call this navbar. Just put navbar on it. What happens? Nope. Oh, wait, wait. It was navbar nav. That's what I wanted. Now it's not floating all the way on the right. Complicated. <laughs> yes, use Silverlight. I uh, can't, can't disagree with you on that one. That search box is on the right side because it has form in line. Let me try these, right? What are these things? Um... Nope, that didn't move them over. My two, margin top and bottom. Okay, so that's the margin. So I don't, it's not the margin that I want to do there. But how do I get these to align? Right. Hello, Eddie. Good to see you. That's behind me. I should open this up so you can actually see it. Forms. Place forms with the form in line. Align the contents of your inline forms with utilities as needed. Justify content between. Um, you can ask me whatever you'd like here. Do you think MS... A micro, uh, master's degree in computer science is unnecessary if you just want to get employed. I think it's completely unnecessary, yes. So what is justify content between? Alright, so let's get rid of the margin stuff here. Um, and let's put that there. There we go. Fantastic. That took me where I wanted to go. All right, now I feel like the nav needs to have a margin bottom. What, right, what was it? MY? 
Sport, uh, what was the margin? Margin and padding. Mister, no, I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I do bottom? Uh, MB. All right. MB five. Developers, 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 hmm. developers, it's not putting a margin. Fifty. Uh, MB. XL5? No. And my brand, look, my brand is. I need to f close that. There's a problem. It's still not putting that. Hmm. I broke the nav tag, yeah. Excuse me? Uh. <laughs> No. Uh, you need to change the site CSS file. Ah. All right, so let's go back over to site CSS. Oh, here we go. Uh, is it? It's after my nav is body content. So body content, I should say margin top. Uh, let's say 20 pixels. Let's start there. That didn't do anything. 200 pixels. Still nothing. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> uh, gosh, why isn't... If I put padding top, no. This isn't doing anything either here. Is, is that doing anything? No, that's not moving either. Padding top in body. Yeah, it is. Eddie's asking if you make me a mod or an admin on your Discord server. I'm, I'm not into administering Discord servers right now. Um, I, I appreciate the offer, but it's not something I'm, I'm actively spending time hanging out on. Um, site CSS, there it is. It is being loaded. Not getting it. So I'm on body content. Um, padding top, yep. Okay, that's actually doing something for me. There we go. So padding top on Body content, I think, is where we want. And I did 20 pixels. And it's it goes top, right, left. So let's, let's move that up. That's better. All right. Cool. That worked for me. How do I PM on Mixer? Uh, I think you just do a slash whisper. Spe space and then uh, name. Uh, but I'm not actively watching Mixer. I'm actually on actively watching Twitch. Um, but you can certainly whisper and I'll pick it up a little bit later. Um, and if, and my, uh, my DMs on uh, Twitter are wide open. So you can DM me on Twitter. It's the same as my... You can actually see it up there in the top... Uh, C Sharp Fritz is who I am on Twitter. But it is one o'clock. I am way over. Let's commit these changes. We've made a lot of changes here today. Oh, yeah. Um. 
um, updated to use Bootstrap 4 and a new latest changes page. All right. Cool. Yeah, look at that. Three hours. Ooh, it's a little bit long. Fantastic. So that's where I'm going to end today. We've got a bunch of changes that we pushed in for our wiki. It handles the routing a little bit better. We're now using Bootstrap 4. Thanks so much to our friends there in the chat room, uh, Smab and John and Standby Reloading, for helping me with the CSS in there. That was, that was a very big help. Thank you so much for that. Um, so this is committed. Take a look. Let me know what you think. If there's anything we could do better, send over a pull request. We'll discuss it on Saturday when I come back. Uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's 1400 UTC. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. I appreciate you tuning in. Take care, and we'll see you next time.